So, let us uh, recall what we had done last time, we have started looking at uh, integration. So, given a function f on an interval a b to r, f bounded, we defined uh, the integral of f via upper sums and lower sums. So, we defined um, for every partition p, we defined what is the lower sum, what is the upper sum and we said f integrable if and only <coughs> or integrable definition if the supremum of least upper bounds uh, of L lower sums is equal to greatest lower bound of upper sums and that was denoted by integral f d x. Right? So, we uh, gave some examples uh, f monoton implies f is integrable. Then we uh, gave some more examples, namely the function f of x is equal to 1 if x belongs to rationals say in 0, 1 and 0 otherwise is not because upper sum is always 1, lower sum is always 0 is not integrable. We uh, also gave example of uh, Thomae's function, it was called the popcorn function. Which has, so this function has the special property namely it is, it has infinite number of discontinuities. In fact, uh, these discontinuities are all rational points. In every sub interval of 0, 1, but is integrable. Right? So, there is various uh, examples of integrable functions keeping in mind uh, the number of discontinuities the function can have. So, uh, as we were pointing out that this function is discontinuous everywhere, monoton is discontinuous at all rational um, countable at the most countably many and Thomas function has infinite number of discontinuities in every sub interval and is integrable. So, let us uh, prove uh, an important class of functions which is integrable namely, so theorem let f be a b to r f continuous. So, let f be a continuous function on an interval close bounded interval a b, then f is integrable. So, let us uh, prove that. So, basically what we want to show it is integrable, we are not interested in computing the integral. So, we will use a criteria that given an any, uh, any epsilon 
So we'll use the criteria that for every epsilon bigger than zero, there exists a partition P of AB such that upper sum minus the lower sum is less than epsilon. So this is will show. So this is what we will show and we had observed that this is a necessary and sufficient condition for a function to be Riemann integrable. So let us start with an epsilon. So fix, so fix, so what does uh, uh, continuity imply? F continuous implies two things, one F is bounded. Right. In fact, it attains maxima minima, we know that. And second, we proved that F is uniformly continuous. Every continuous function on a closed bounded interval is uniformly continuous. So, what does uniform continuity say? So, hence, we are already given an epsilon, so given epsilon. So, for epsilon but 0, there is a delta such that whenever x minus y is less than uh, uh, delta, that implies f x minus f y is less than f. Whenever two points are close, their values are close. That is what uniform continuity says. So, mathematically that says that for any epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta so that whenever x and y are close by a distance delta, the values are close by epsilon. So that is uh, quite useful uh, in the sense that now we can select a partition so that the points are always inside a distance delta. So choose a partition, so let P be a partition. of A, B such that so it divides into sub intervals so uh, such that okay I did not introduce this notion is less than delta. So what is the norm of the partition? Uh, norm of P a partition is defined as the maximum uh, okay uh, maximum of the length of sub intervals. So, x i minus x i minus 1, i between 1 and n, if p is the partition, uh, say a equal to x 0 less than x 1 less than x n equal to b. This is a definition of length, uh, definition of the norm of a partition. So, every partition divides the interval a, b into sub intervals. So, look at the maximum length of the sub intervals. Right, and that maximum length uh, is called the norm. So this is what is called. So this norm, uh, this is called. The norm. Of the partition. So uh, uniform continuity says, given epsilon, there is a delta. Say that whenever two points are close f x minus f y is close. So, if we choose a partition whose maximum, uh, whose norm is less than delta, then that will mean that for any two points in a sub interval, right, the length will be less than, the distance will be less than delta and hence the values will be close by epsilon. Right. So, uh, now also observe, also note F attains maximum and minimum on each sub interval, right? Because it is continuous function. So let uh, capital M i, which is the maximum of f, uh, f of x, be attained at some point. So let us call it as 
x belonging to x i minus 1 to x i. Let us say this value is attained at some point say x i dash okay, and where x i dash is a point in between and small m i is the infimum of f x x belonging to x i minus 1 to x i and let that be attained at some point say x i double dash where x i dash and x i double dash belong to right. So, it is saying that f is a continuous function. So, look at its uh, restriction on the closed bounded interval x i minus 1 to x i it must have a maximum value somewhere in that interval, it should have a minimum value in that interval and must be attained. So, those points we are calling as this. So, uh, why we are doing all that is because now let us look at the upper sum now, upper sum with respect to s minus the lower sum with respect to f. So, what is that? So, that is equal to capital M i minus small m i 1 to n maximum minus the minimum right into the length of the interval x i minus x i minus 1 right. Now, this value is taken at that point. So, this is i equal to 1 to n. So, f of uh, x i dash minus f of x i double dash into the length of the interval right. So, that was a, uh, and now these two points x i dash and x i double dash are inside this interval right and so that means the distance between them is less than delta because norm of the partition p is less than delta. And whenever that happens, we know that by uniform continuity these values are small. So, that is all the reason we did that. So, let us imply. So, this is less than or equal to delta times sigma i equal to 1 to oh, uh, less than delta. So, this is less than epsilon times x i minus x i minus 1 because x i dash, x i double dash both belong to the interval x i minus 1 to x i implying that the distance between them is less than delta and that should be okay to say that implying that f of x i dash minus f of x i double dash is less than epsilon right by uniform continuity. So, what we have done is uh, the interval a b we have found a partition says that the distance between any two points in the sub interval is less than delta and that delta is corresponding to the uniform continuity of the function. So, the values for any two points will be less than epsilon. So, all that is used to bring it here. So, what is this quantity? So, consecutive terms will cancel out. So, this is epsilon times b minus a right. So, given uh, epsilon bigger than 0, we have found uh, a partition p say that the upper sum minus the lower sum is less than epsilon times v minus a. So, the constant times something does not matter, we could have started with epsilon divided by b minus a right. So, hence f is integrable. So, that proves so the theorem that every continuous function uh, is uh, integrable. At least historically, uh, this was first uh, proved by Cauchy. Uh, you will find the Cauchy coming in your various courses. Uh, he was a French mathematician who contributed a lot of things in lot of branches in mathematics. 
real analysis, complex analysis, algebra, statistics, you will have Cauchy's distribution coming in statistics and probability. So, uh, and he was the first one who proved uh, this theorem, gave a proof that every continuous one. In fact, he was the one who actually defined rigorously what is the notion of Riemann, in, what is the notion of a function being integrable. Okay. And he all at that, that was a time when uh, mathematicians did not bother much about continuity or discontinuity. They thought every function is continuous kind of a thing. So, he uh, assumed not only continuity, he even assumed uh, the fact that we are using that it is uniformly continuous. So, that was the only, uh, uh, I won't say mistake, but that is oversight that what we call now as uniform continuity, he thought that is continuity at that time and he gave a, pr a rigorous proof of this. Right. So, um, the class of integrable functions is quite large it includes all continuous functions on the interval a b okay right now the, the problem is uh, okay so this is uh, we'll, we had started looking at uh, the two questions that what is the class of integrable functions so we have given lot of examples and uh, now second problem is how does one compute uh, integral so let us uh, look answer that question, how does compute f d x a to b. Can we have a way of computing uh, for a given function, what is that integral, right. So, there comes uh, a theorem which is very important and uh, that is why this integral becomes important that is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, let us uh, state and prove what is called fundamental theorem of calculus. So, theorem. So, uh, let me call this as part 1. There are two parts of this. So, let us. So, it says let f and capital F be two functions on defined on the interval a b to r with the following properties. One, f is integrable on a b capital F is continuous on at least the open interval a b and f is differentiable with oh sorry no continuous in the closed interval i'm sorry uh, we should say f is continuous in the closed interval and is differentiable uh, at least in the open interval in differentiable uh, capital F is continuous and differentiable in interval a b such that its derivative is the function f of x. So, small f and capital F are related with each other in the following way that the derivative of capital F is equal to small f in the interval open interval a b. And of course, we are putting conditions like small f is integrable, capital F is continuous on the interval a b. So, it will be integrable. Then, if all these conditions are satisfied, then f b minus f of a is equal to integral a to b f x d x. So, the function capital F and small f are related with each other by this equation. 
that if small f is the derivative, so look at this. So this integral, if small f is the derivative of capital F, then integral of small f is just f b minus f of a. That means what? It is a, a big uh, advantage that for a given function, if you are able to find that it is a derivative of something, then integral of that function is just f b minus f of a. You do not have to go to partitions, you do not have to go to limits or anything. right? So, this is uh, uh, and this was uh, again approved by Cauchy rigorously and uh, historically it was a very uh, significant uh, theorem. At least uh, it relates differentiable uh, functions derivative with the integral. So, in that sense people started uh, looking at derivative as an integral as the process is of reverse of each other kind of thing. There is a reason because of this theorem. But the importance of this theorem lies in the fact that it helps you to compute integrals right? if you are able to recognize right, that small f is the derivative of a function capital F, then the integral is. So, let us prove this uh, theorem, give a proof. So, we want to compute uh, f of b minus f of a and uh, uh, we know what is f of b minus f of a and we want to show it is the integral. right? So, essentially that means Okay, it does not matter. Yeah, so that means essentially that uh, that this is a number we should be trying to show lies between the upper and the lower sum. Whatever be the partition, we can show that for every partition p of the interval a b, right, f b minus f of a is in between, then that must be the integral, right. So, that is what we are trying to show. So, we will show. for every partition p of a b lower sum is less than or equal to f b minus f of a is less than or equal to the upper sum. Right? or that is enough to show that because if this is the only number between upper and lower they are shrinking. So, this number must be equal to the integral of the function. So, let us start with a partition. So, let p be a partition and uh, so let us say a equal to x 0, x n equal to b, b any partition of a b. So, now let us uh, you see the, what we are trying to do is I want to bring in inside the upper and the lower sums. So, I have to go to the upper and the lower sums with respect to the partition p. right? Somehow, I have to steer my arguments towards that idea. I should bring in this. Uh, so, now look at f b minus f of a, this is what we want to compute and now here this is how the partition comes in, this is same as f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n. Yeah, that is ok. No. So, ok. I add and subtract the consecutive values of f at the consecutive points. See, so, now partition points are inside now, right. So, let us call this as 1. Now, what is now the next step should be that this partition this um, f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 should be related with small f, right. Then you will get some summation kind of a thing in terms of small f. Now, so and small f is the derivative of capital F. So, what is the 
which is the theorem which relates a function with the values of the derivative. Right? So, that is all one thinks about. So, f b minus f of a in terms of the derivative and that is Lagrange's mean value theorem. So, by Lagrange's mean value theorem on x i minus 1 to x i, there is a point c i belonging to x i minus 1 to x i such that f dash at c i is equal to f at x i minus 1 oh, sorry uh, f at x i minus f at x i minus 1 divided by x i minus x i minus 1 for every i right. So, once that is the case that means what? So, that implies that f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 is equal to f dash of c i at and the length of the interval. So, that is Lagrange's mean value theorem essentially. You see how Lagrange's mean value theorem is playing a part at all these places. And this derivative of small f uh, capital F is small f. So, it is f of c i x i minus x i minus 1. Right? Now, keep in mind I said apply Lagrange's mean value theorem on this interval. One should check the conditions of Lagrange's mean value theorem are applicable. Capital F is continuous everywhere. So, it is continuous on the interval x i minus 1 to x i it is differentiable in the open interval right so it will be differentiable in the open intervals x i minus 1 to x i each one of them so lagrange's mean value theorem is applicable for each closed bounded interval x i minus 1 to x i so though that's why those theorems were uh, those conditions were put both of these ones okay and now so let us we want to go to 1, we need summation. So, implies summation of x i minus f of x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n is equal to sigma f of c i i equal to 1 to n x i minus x i minus 1. Right? And that uh, by 1 is equal to f b minus f of a. So, let us call this as 2. Okay. So, what we have done is we have computed f b minus f of a in terms of the function small f. It says this summation is equal to f at some point c i, c i is a point in that interval into the length of the interval. Right? So, uh, okay. Now, what is f of c i? That is the value of the function at the point c i. Right? So, it will be always bigger than or equal to the minimum value and less than or equal to the maximum value. So, using that implies that if I look at the minimum value small m i x i minus x i minus 1 will be less than or equal to summation f of c i. So, uh, okay, this is not imply you know, this is uh, this is observation minus x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n and that is less than or equal to capital M I uh, sum, uh, capital M I, uh, I put summation. So, let me put summation everywhere right uh, less than or equal to the I put summation in between. So, less than or equal to summation capital M i of x i minus x i minus 1. Is that okay? Because this is a value at some point in between in the interval. Big, so, f of small f of c i is bigger than m i is less than capital M i. Right? So, now just combine what is that in between quantity? 1 and 2 say that is f b minus f of a. So, 1 
plus 2 plus you can call it as 3 if you like imply that uh, so this is a lower sum is less than or equal to f b minus f of a is less than or equal to the upper sum right because this thing is a lower sum left hand side in 3 this is lower sum this is the upper sum so lower sum is less than this summation and that summation is uh, by 2 equal to sigma of capital F i and that by 1 is F b minus F of a. So, putting these three equations together, we get this and that completes the proof, right. So, this is uh, one of the important theorems uh, in uh, integral or in the whole of uh, uh, calculus or analysis as far as differentiation and integration is concerned. It relates differentiation and integration in the way that if you know that the derivative of a function, then you can compute the integral of that function. So, as a consequence of this, all you get every derivative formula gives you an integral formula. Derivative of sin is cos, so if you integrate cos, you must get back sin. So, integral of right derivative of any function, any derivative formula will give you a corresponding and that is the one of the reasons that as soon as differentiation is done in uh, undergraduate courses and integration is started immediately 500 formulas appear okay, and you are uh, sort of supposed to remember them and start computing integrals. Okay. The culprit is fundamental theorem of calculus okay. and historically this was very important because not only it said that for every continuous function you can have the integral right and uh, if you know the that this function is the derivative of something then you can compute the integral and that led to lot of research in uh, what is called uh, theory of Fourier series. So, it gets related historically with the theory of Fourier series. Okay. Uh, right. So, let me not go into that. So, basically the important thing is as far as computation is concerned, so this is what is uh, important. You can compute integral of f if you know that uh, and keep in mind f dash is equal to small f. So, automatically says small f is continuous because capital F is continuous. Right small f is uh, differentiable, okay. right. 